Welcome! I built this 8-bit computer entirely on breadboards using basic logic gates. It is based on Ben Eater's 8-bit computer with some modifications. I would highly recommend checking out Ben's YouTube channel since he dives in much deeper into how this computer operates. He also has videos on other related topics so don't forget to check it out if you're interested in this kind of stuff. This here is considered a SAP computer as simple as possible and it has a very basic instruction set and can do limited operations so it's not a full-blown computer but it's a very good project to undertake if you are interested in learning how a computer works at the lowest level. I want to program this computer with the basic program but before I do that let me go over some of the modules on this computer to give a better idea on how it all works together. Here at the top left is the variable clock it's driven by a 555 timer and the speed is controlled with a potentiometer right here. I estimated the maximum speed to be approximately 500 Hz, but can probably run faster stably with a different resistor. Right under the clock is the RAM module. The yellow LEDs are the RAM address indicators and the red LEDs are the RAM contents. We can examine and deposit new contents into the RAM using uh, the levers on this top row. So we have four level levers for the RAM address, which means there's a maximum of 16 RAM slots, and we have eight levers for the RAM data, which means that we can store 256 different values in RAM. Skipping over to the top of the right side, we have the program counter. The program counter basically increments each time it's told to do so and can be written to if the computer needs to jump to a specific instruction. Right under the program counter is the A register, which uses ICs to latch the data but underneath the ICs is just a bunch of SR latches. So the computer can input data from the uh, the bus into the register and the register will latch it in place for as long as necessary. There's also a uh, register B right over here and it practically, practically works the same way as register A. And in between the two registers is the accumulator. In this system it's called the sum register since it sums up the values of register A and register B but keep in mind that it can sum negative values as well. This register will always display the sum of the two registers without needing a, a clock signal. On the register B is the output register. In this simple computer, the output register just displays the data it receives as decimal values using the LED displays. There's an EE prompt for it, um, and it's used to drive the LED displays to determine how to display each digit that is passed into it. Notice that the output register also has a 555 timer and it's used to refresh the LED displays, similar to how uh, computer monitors refresh their output. Under the output register is the flags register and it's used to latch flag values to be used by the microinstruction register. For example, if the last sum in the accumulator was zero, the ZF or zero flag value will be latched and the micro instruction can check for that value and act on it if necessary. Under the RAM module is the micro instruction register. We saved this module for less because it's the most complex one. This register, register controls the inputs and outputs for each module on this board. So for example, it can determine which module will output data on the bus and which module will read data from the bus. The microcode for the instructions can be implemented using hardware, but 
In order to save on hardware, and because it would require a lot of it, a decision was made to use EE prompts similar to the LED output display uh, to provide the micro instructions. This is basically a multiplexer. We can see which outputs are active based on the inputs, i.e. program counter, by looking at the blue LEDs at the bottom here. The labels under the LEDs indicate which modules are active at the current cycle. For example, the RO LED is on and the AI LED is on, so that means that the next clock cycle, uh, the RAM will output to the bus and register A will read from the bus. And lastly, this is the bus. It connects all the modules with 8 bits. We can see what values are on the bus by looking at the LED indicators above the bus. Now that we know what each module does, let's take a quick look at the remaining levers. The leftmost lever is the power, and right beside it is the reset switch. When toggled, this switch will reset each module to zero or null. As mentioned earlier, this knob controls the speed of the clock. And going to the right side, the first lever starts, the, starts and stops the clock. If the clock is stopped, the lever to the right allows us to step through each cycle manually. The next, this next lever is used to switch between execution mode and program mode. When program mode is enabled, the RAM address and data levers are used to set the address and values. Once the levers are set, the deposit lever can be toggled to persist the data and RAM. Right under the levers is a 5 amp power supply. I've had issues with not having enough power for the computer when using basic USB power supplies since they don't usually supply enough power. So if you're having uh, strange issues with your computer, check to make sure that you have enough power supply to it. As mentioned earlier, the instruction register contains the microcode that determines which modules will output and which modules will input data from the bus. It also controls when to latch the flags in the flags register. The microcode is programmed on the EE prompts, which act, act as multiplexers. So for example, if location 0000 is requested, the EE prompt is programmed to respond with a, a set of bits for each microcycle. That is, each program cycle or instruction has five microcycles. During each uh, microcycle, the EE prompt will, will open and close certain modules depending on which address is requested during the specific microcycle. Uh, this can be a little bit confusing, so as mentioned previously, please check out Ben Eater's channel for more inform information on how this works since it will require much more time to dive into it. Now that we have a rough idea on how the instructions are programmed, let's uh, take a look at the instruction set that was programmed for this computer in the EE prompts. The first instruction is a no-op, which means it does not do anything, so we'll skip, skip over that. The inst second instruction is an LDA, or load A from a RAM location. The add instruction takes the value from the sum register and copies it over to the A register. The sub or subtract instruction toggles the subtraction flag on the accumulator register uh, to subtract data instead of adding. The STA instruction stores the contents of the A register in a RAM location. The LDI instruction loads a literal value into the A register. For example, LDI5 will store 5 in the A register. The JMP or jump instruction will jump to a specific program instruction which actually writes to the program counter. The JC instruction will jump to a specific program instruction similar to JMP but only if the last sum had a carry. The JZ is also similar to JC but it jumps only if the last sum had a zero. We will skip over all of the no-op instructions where they're just placeholders and take a look at the last instruction, the out instruction. This instruction moves data from the bus to the output register. Now that we know what instructions we can work with, let's try writing a simple program using the instructions. The program that I want to write is one that will start at the value 15 and count down to 0. 
once at zero, it should restart back to uh, 15 and uh, repeat counting down. So the first thing we, ha we have to do is load 15 into the A register. We can then output the value that is in the A register. What we need to uh, do next is to subtract the 1 from uh, the 15 that we just added. Uh, we do have the sub instruction, but the instruction requires a RAM location where the value that is being subtracted is stored. So uh, let's use the RAM location 15, which is the last RAM location, uh, where we will have the value at 1 stored. The next instruction will check to see if the sum is zero and jump back to instruction zero, uh, the LDI 15 instruction, if it is in fact zero. If it's not zero, the program will continue to the next instruction, so the next instru instruction will just jump back to instruction one, which will output the value of the subtracted value stored in register A and repeat the program again. Let's also not forget to deposit the value of 1 into RAM location 15. Now that we have the assembly code for our program, uh, we need to convert it to machine code to input it into the computer. Let's start off by numbering our instructions starting at 0. Since our computer can only store up to 16 values in RAM, we can use 4 bits to indicate the RAM location. Next, we need the 8 bits of data that will be deposited to each of these RAM locations. The computer is designed to accept the instruction part in the, uh, in the first 4 bits and the data part in the last 4 bits. If we look back at our instruction set, we can see that the bits for LDI instruction are 0101. So the first 4 bits will be 0101. The next four bits will be the value, which in this case is 15. 15 in binary is four ones. The out instruction is 1110, and since the out instruction has no data, since it's outputting the value from register A, we can leave the last four bits as all zeros. The sub instruction is 0011, and the part the data part is the location in RAM where the value which we are subtracting is located. In this case, it's memory location 15, so we can re represent that with all once again. The JZ instruction is 1000, and the data part is the RAM location where it will jump, which uh, is 0. The JMP instruction is 0110. And the data part is the RAM location where it will jump, which is 1. And lastly, the RAM location 15 will have the value of 1. Now that we have our program and machine code instructions, let's uh, input this uh, assembly code machine code into the computer. Power it on and switch to program mode. Select RAM address 0 and select the value of 01011111 for the data. Toggle the deposit switch. Notice that the RAM address and value have been updated. Let's deposit the remaining instructions in a similar manner, remembering to toggle deposit for each one. Now that we have the program input into, into the computer, let's switch to the execute mode, reset the computer uh, to the default state, and switch to run. As a challenge, see if you can come up with the assembly code for this computer to multiply two numbers. Post it in the comments if you're willing to share. I hope you enjoyed this video on the 8-bit breadboard computer. As mentioned earlier, don't forget to check out Ben Eater's YouTube channel 
Um, I also have this book here, uh, Digital Computer Electronics by Malvino, which is a great read for those interested in learning more in depth about digital computers, uh, gates, registers, counters, and uh, just basic electronics that make up a computer. Uh, the book contains a few uh, versions of SAP computers, which are easy to understand and follow. And I'm not getting paid to prom promote this book, but I do highly recommend it. If you have any uh, questions regarding this computer or have general suggestions, please leave a comment and I will respond to it when I get a chance. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe for more content like this. Until next time.